maybe my job is much more important when the things they don't go well in order to to support to give him confidence to show our trust So, Davide, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I know it's a really busy, anxious period because uh, so now we are just before the last two races and your season yeah. is going amazing. But let's go, yeah. back, let's go back a little bit in time because before the season, when we had an online virtual debrief with you, like this one, you said that Anyway, what happened with the calendar and wherever we go to race, the fastest rider will be the same. Do you still <laughs> feel the same? Uh, yeah, it's true. I didn't remember I say that. Yeah, but I was thinking that. Yeah, of course, of course, uh, during this year, this year has been a little bit special. And uh, yeah, it's no doubt that uh, we have seen... Uh, We have seen quite a few surprises uh, into this championship. Uh, probably also because, and, and we, couldn't, we couldn't think about, because uh, of the, the absence of Mark markets, you know. Uh, unfortunately, he had an injury on the first race. And honestly, the fact that he is not here racing, it changed a lot the... The, the 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 balance of the races, the, the 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 working of the races. I think probably without Mark, probably many more riders they felt like okay, they had a chance, they had an opportunity, or maybe uh, I mean Mark has been so dominant last year, he was not here, and the other rider they were much more alternate each other, you know, much more let's say especially at the beginning of the season, a little bit irregular, you know. Then by the second half of the season, I think our rider been quite cost consistent, probably the most consistent. But at the beginning of the season was, I mean, so many riders on the podium every week different uh, and whatever. So, yeah, it's true that, uh, okay, I, 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 was, I was wrong on, on this, but uh, okay, luckily, likely, likely I was wrong. Uh, because, uh, I mean, we could see Suzuki very fast and very good in, the, in, the, in this championship. So, uh, of course, I mean, uh, we were expecting uh, maybe Ducati much more uh, competitive. We were expecting uh, maybe Yamaha much more, uh, um, much more competitive or much more regular, cost consistent. They were being competitive because they won, they won uh, whatever six races now. Okay, and um, yeah, but uh, it's been a championship with surprises, and I think positive surprises. And really positive for you so far. I mean, for you guys, yeah. and Suzuki was this season difficult for you for the team members, for the mechanics, because we had a lot of triple headers. And I heard some voices that basically it was really tiring after a while also for, for the mechanics. Uh, yeah, it's been, okay, it's been a different championship compared to what we used to. First of all, uh, we had many, many triple races, so three races in a week. But also, most of all, because of this COVID situation, uh, the, the three weeks, it's always like you have to stay in the bubble. So it's basically three weeks away from home every month, you know. So it's been quite uh, tough, but it's okay. I mean, we've been, we've been uh, at home for a long time and all the people involved, they couldn't wait to get back in action. And at the end of the day, We all making an effort, but uh, we are all happy that we managed to to have a championship, you know, to have races. And 
Yeah, it's been difficult, but somehow everybody happy that we did something. We did a championship. Maybe our mechanics are not so tired because we get the kind of excitement in this in these races. Uh, we have a, uh, I mean, it's a good moment for us for Suzuki. So it's much more the excitement than the tiredness probably. But no, I would say normal. We are all professional. This is our job. This is what we love to do, and uh, we not. I mean, we are conscious that we are so lucky enough that we can continue to do our job that we like, that we have a passion with, while also there are many people, you know, struggling, suffering, and uh, in a in a bad situation. So uh, we cannot be tired. Sure, it will not be right. You know. <laughs> Let's talk about Joan a little bit. Um, do you remember yeah. when and why you said, okay, I need this guy. I want this guy in our team. <laughs> I think uh, I had the first meeting with, uh, with uh, Joan in uh, Jerez, during Jerez weekend, 2018. Mm -hmm. I thought that the circuit secret meeting and whatever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, I mean, I, I liked him. And uh, we had interest on him, and uh, so then I contacted uh, I contacted his manager, and we organized a meeting. And uh, I remember that at that time uh, I asked straight away. I mean, what? Which bike do you want to ride in the MotoGP? Where do you want to go? He said, "I want Suzuki." He said because I think if he was thinking that for his body size, mm -hmm. uh, Suzuki was. A good bike. It could fit very well on a Suzuki bike. I don't know how he he, he was thinking like that, you know. And uh, so then uh, I found a guy that was quite excited to join Suzuki to be in a MotoGP with us. So then then we 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 continued to talk. This was quite essential for us, you know, to understand this motivation. But it means that you saw something in him already while he was in Moto3. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I was impressed by his Moto3 championship when he when he, he won the title because to win 10 races in one season in a Moto3, which is so, so hard and so many riders fighting, but he was always there. Also, I remember, I mean, he was a guy that when he needed to overtake, he overtook. I mean, no doubt. I mean, he could pass. If he wants to pass, he passed. So, I, I, we were impressed by him. And then when it was a time to choose another young talent, because we wanted to follow that way, mm -hmm. uh, because as a Suzuki, we started with a rookie with Vinales and kind of worked it. We were happy about performance. Then he left. And then we say, OK, we, we want to do the same. And we choose Alex Rins to do the same, the same route. Then also Alex was working. I mean, he was doing good performance. We said, OK, that's the way. Let's choose another one, you know, and uh, and then we choose John because we wanted to follow that way, you know. Our our president, uh, Mr. Suzuki, kind of always stimulate us. You no, know? he likes this way. He likes to grow up young rider, to make them a kind of Suzuki riders since the beginning, and then hopefully to keep them stay, to make them stay for a long time. I don't know. If Alex and John will stay for a long time, but this is what we wish. This is what we would like to happen, you know? Well, for sure, you have him at least for two more years. So it's, it's yes, bad. yes, we secure uh, them for 21, 22, and before, before the season started. No? Um, what are his weak points and what are his strongest points, you think? Probably the weak point in this moment is uh, experience. Because um, he's, he's one of the, I mean, he's one of the less experienced rider in the world championship, yeah. you know. Except uh, Lequona is the rider with less races in the world championship, including Moto3, Moto2, MotoGP. And so he's uh, sometimes, uh, I think, he's making up his experience. So I'm happy for that. Because if he can make more experience, it should be better. <laughs> so, and also, uh, a strong point, I think, uh, probably his mental approach to the racing is really determined. He has a lot of expectation on himself. He really wants a good race every time. I mean, 
he really wants to to, to he, he wants to win every race probably no if he can and um, and his mental approach even now I was quite impressed especially last Sunday in Valencia because we, we never kind of we never talk about world championship or like make strategy tactics like uh, okay look at Quartararo look at Vinales look at uh, Rins a competitor or whatever just always thinking about himself and to do the, the best possible race. And this is quite impressive because he's so young. He's leading the MotoGP Championship. Before Valencia, you only had 14 points. Not so much. You will think, then you make a little bit of strategy, try to be careful, try to not make a mistake and whatever. But he just started. I think he had in mind to win the race since the beginning. He didn't care about championship, you know. Also, he's a type of guy, and this is one of strong points, he doesn't care about the other rider. He just think about himself. So I'm sure that Sunday he will go in a racing, try to do the best he can for himself. When I was preparing for this interview, I was wondering that, as we already mentioned, you have at least two more years with him. But did you have any appendix in the contract saying that, okay, if you win a world title, then this or that will change for the upcoming season? salary, bonus, whatever, you know. Yes, it's written, yes. It was already written in 2019, so since the beginning, it's always written, yes. Do you remember what was your first impression about Valentino? And what you said about him 10 years ago? Because you said that when you met him, he was clearly just a boy and he asked a lot of questions and he wanted to understand yeah. everything. Is yeah, 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 yeah. maybe? No, not like that. Not, not, uh, not like that. No. Uh, John, uh, I had, a, I had a memory. His first test with uh, Suzuki. We were in Motegi, and uh, he couldn't stop. We, we, he went out for the first time for uh, three, four laps. And then uh, box in a pit board and then going. Box in a pit board, going. Box. He did 10 laps. First time on a bike, you know. And then he, he stopped it and he was like in the moon, you know. He was so happy. Yeah. <laughs> Smiling. Yeah. Uh, but no, not, not that, that, that type of question. Not that type of guy. They more, uh, probably more shy, more relaxed somehow, you know. And how would you describe your relationship with him? I think we have a good relationship and uh, I think he also, uh, I mean, I like to talk to him. I like to maybe try to, to, to give some, some I, I would not say advice, but to say maybe what I think. And, uh, and I, I can say that he listen. I mean, this type of guy, they listen and then sometimes they, they follow, sometimes not, but they listen, you know. Because uh, this type of guy, uh, they are a little bit special. They want to know everything, you know. They listen to everybody. Then probably they, they choose their own way. But I have to say that, uh, yeah, we have a good relationship. And, uh, and, uh, and also maybe my job is much more important when the things, they don't go well. In order to, to support, to give him confidence, to show our trust. Because when things are going well, it's easy, you know? It's all easy. So now it's easy. It's much more easy now. Begin of season, you know, the first race was a crash. Then uh, then in Brno, the third race, another crash again. That was a little bit critical moment uh, where, but where I think all the team, uh, we all show that we really trusted him. We had a lot of confidence on him. The results will come, no doubt, and whatever. So we try to to keep him. But he is uh, he has a guy. He's a guy with a lot of expectations. So it's himself. He puts not the pressure, but he puts expectation on himself quite high, much more high than than everybody else. You know. I'm running out of time. Thank you so much for your time and finger crossed and hopefully see you okay. in days at the track.